The audiophiles at Sonos are constantly looking for new ways to tickle our eardrums with the sweet sound of music. And this year, Sonos enters a new product category with the $450 Sonos Ace over the ear headphones. Now at that price point, I do wonder how repairable these headphones are. So let's take a closer look at the hardware and see what we can see. The first consumable components we're gonna look at are the ear cushions, since these are the source of most of the wear and tear these headphones will see. Fortunately, each one is secured by a set of four magnets and pries away easily. A great design choice and a super simple way of extending the life of your headphones. We're not a fan of hidden screws. Now these stickers aren't a huge deal, but this seems unnecessary given that this entire section is normally hidden by the ear cushions. But hey, now you know where the entry point is. After removing four T5 Torx screws on each ear cup and disconnecting the inner microphone flex cables, we can get our first look inside the Sonos Ace. Note, there was no glue holding these plates in place. As expected from this price point, the black PCBs also exude a premium feel. I quickly spot two battery cells inside the left ear cup, but it's not immediately clear where the battery connector is. After unscrewing and disconnecting a couple of cables and removing the USB-C PCB board, I find the battery cable hiding underneath. This 4.12 watt hour twin cell battery is the second most important consumable component and I'm pleasantly surprised to see how easily replaceable it is. A touch smaller than the battery found in Sony's XM5s, but it still delivers the same runtime of around 30 hours with comparable functionality. So far so repairable, but what about the third of our top three consumable components, the headband? Unfortunately, this is where the Sonos Ace stumbles. Unlike the beautifully repair-friendly Fairbuds XL USB-C interconnects or III's TMA2's simple but repairable 3.5mm jacks, the Sonos Ace offers no easy way to replace that cushion. Running a single cable from one ear cup to the other is a common but deeply flawed design that neglects the complexity of removing these cables from each ear cup. I'm hoping Sonos will address this in their next iteration of headphones. Let's dig deeper. The media control button on the right ear cup is very satisfying to operate, and the see-through plastic case hints at how it works. The Flex PCB layered on the case holds three Hall Effect sensors, meaning our media control button moves a magnet. Removing the casing on the button reveals a set of springs that center the button after any movement. This wasn't my intended route of entry, but to remove this casing, I had to access the C-clip. With the buttons out, we can remove the Flex PCB connecting one end of the wires passing through the headband. There's four more screws hidden underneath this adhesive cushion, and removing the screws and applying a little elbow grease is enough to dislodge the driver. With the driver out, I can remove this grounding cable and two brackets so I can finally show you why it's so important to have a connection point on the outside of the ear cup for the cable running through the headband. Let's get that main board out next. A couple of ribbon cables lead to the active noise cancellation microphones and a few screws hold the board down. We're running through a very similar process on the left ear cup, and again the soldered connections on the flex PCB prevents me from removing the interconnect cable. I kinda hoped that removing the flex cables and screws would be enough to dislodge this board, but there just wasn't enough give. That driver needs to come out. It's entirely normal to glue the driver to the body, in fact it's necessary to maintain audio quality, but maintaining modularity is always nice. In this case, shaving a little off the sides of the PCB or plastic would have allowed this board to come away. A quick look at the chipsets reveals a Qualcomm QCC1581 system on chip, which delivers highly power efficient lossless audio over Bluetooth along with Qualcomm's ANC capabilities. Also present, Qualcomm's QCA4012 dual band Wi-Fi chip. This is a low power chip designed for Internet of Things applications and probably enables the switching between Sonos Arc and the Ace headphones. And that leads us to the main pain point for Sonos fans. These aren't the world's first Wi-Fi headphones, and there's good reason for that. The likes of Qualcomm are developing low power chipsets for portable devices, but it's gonna take time for those to permeate into the market. So overall, how do we feel about these headphones? They're definitely well built, and it could go head to head with the AirPods Max for premium feel and Sony's XM5s for functionality. On repairability though, it's a bit of a mixed bag. They seem to have approached the design with good intentions. The headset only uses T5 torque screws and the battery is pretty easy to remove, but there is some work left to do. We did have some hidden screws and the headband would be an absolute nightmare to repair. With that in mind, we're giving the Sonos Ace headphones a repairability score of 5 out of 10. As always, Sonos has the opportunity to improve the score if they ever make parts and manuals available to the general public.